uh, welcome to this tutorial and uh, in this video I'll be discussing decision making and risk I'll give a brief introduction uh, what uh, decision making and risk is and then I'll perform um, a practical computation to show how um, we arrive at uh, the optimal decision um, under risk okay so decision making under risk is different from decision making under uncertain conditions in the other video i explained how that um, um we calculate uh, uh, the optimal decision um, that um, a decision maker or an investor would arrive at using uncertain conditions and i would say to say under certain conditions there are basically several options but there are no probabilities attached to the um, um, occurrences of those events or uh, actions. But decision making under risk is probably different. And this one now we basically um, have probabilities which are attached to the uh, states of nature, which is favorable market and unfavorable market. Uh, so this one we assume that um, the risk associated to undertaking a, a particular decision is actually known okay uh, probably it could be that there is a past experience and we should be able to attach um, probabilities to the occurrences of um, uh, certain um, actions or events as the case would be all right so let's consider the table here on the board from the table here on the board as you can see um, this side i've got a favorable market and a favorable market these two are known to be states of nature. These are conditions that we can basically uh, not change and that we have no control over. This side are the alternatives from which I can choose which course of action to take. As you can see, I can um, invest in a large shop, I can invest in a small shop, or I can choose to actually do nothing. Are we together? So these ones, I basically have full control. It's my choices. These ones, they are states of nature. They are just like bad economy, um, good economy and something like that. You don't have control over that. All right, now let's see um, how this goes now. Um, we have the table here which has been given with uh, states of nature and different uh, alternatives. From here, we are requested um, under the required um, thing, the examiner that can give you in the exam. So we are, we've been told to say, calculate the expected monetary value and recommend the best action, okay? So we've been told to calculate the expected monetary value for each of the three alternatives that we have control over, all right? So let's see the expected monetary value um, under the large shop. So solution, solution one, solution one here, Solution one, okay, I have large shop, and then I'll say um, $100 under favorable market, there's a $100 here under the favorable market, so I'll put $100, $100,000, okay, I'll multiply this with its respective probability, the probability under favorable market is 0.6, all right? And then plus, I have under favorable uh, negative 80,000. When I put brackets, I'm simply indicating to say this is a loss and uh, not a positive payoff. So I have a negative uh, 80,000, a negative um, 80,000. multiply by uh, 0.4 okay quickly I can process this on my calculator the way it's looking I'll simply say open brackets um, 100,000 um, 100,000 multiplied by 0 0.6 close bracket plus open brackets and uh, negative uh, 80,000 multiplied by 0 0.4 and then I obtain something like uh, 28,000 dollars okay $28,000 is my expected the, uh, monetary value under large shop. I go to small shop. 
small shop, small shop, um, under favorable market, I have uh, 70,000. And the probability attached to this is 0 0.6. And favorable market have negative 20,000. And the probability attached to it is 0 0.4. Okay, I can process this as well on the calculator quickly. Uh, 70,000 multiplied by 0 0.6, close brackets plus open brackets. Uh, negative 20 multiplied by uh, 0 0.4. And then I have obtained 34,000 34, as my expected monetary value under a uh, small shop. Okay, now you can see I still have another decision here to make. Possibly to opt to do nothing, uh, which is do nothing here. So I need also to calculate for do nothing because I want to earn all the possible marks in the exam. So I say um, 0 multiplied by 0 0.6 plus zero dollars multiplied by 0 0.4 and then I have zero dollar here okay so now in response to question one which uh, um, uh, asked me to calculate the um, expected monetary value and recommend the best action in response to it I would simply say uh, the best action is to go for a small shop because it's the one which has the highest expected uh, monetary value um, among the three uh, choices that I have. So choose small shop with expected monetary value over $34,000. All right, that's okay. Now, um, my second question is calculate the expected value with perfect information. Now, under this assumption, uh, the examiner is assuming that um, I have got perfect information. I've been provided with uh, perfect information and I can, I can change the course of action depending on the market. So, what basically it is under this, um, we we'll basically... We we'll basically, uh, from each state of nature, we we'll basically choose the best uh, course of action that can be taken. Like, uh, for instance, in this case, uh, under favorable, the best course of action is to go for the uh, large shop, which will give me the payoff of uh, 100, because the 100 is the best uh, um, payoff under favorable, um, uh, favorable market. So, I would say expected monetary uh, value with um expected expected value with perfect information will be the best choice and a favorable okay which is um a hundred dollars hundred thousand dollars multiplied by 0 0.6 and the best under and favorable now as you may be aware the biggest number here is not negative 80 um or negative 20 the biggest number is actually zero here Okay, zero dollars. So I'll go for um, zero dollars um, between 20 and 80. 20 is bigger in terms of uh, negative numbers. Okay, so I'll go for zero dollars. You remember your number line? Yes. All right, so here I am. I'll do that and then I'll process this in the, on the calculator. What I'll basically have is... I'll basically have 60. Okay, so I have uh, $60,000, $60,000, 60000 um, that's uh, the expected value with perfect information. All right, now the last part uh, of the question is to calculate the value of perfect information. Now the value of perfect information is basically how much are we willing to pay, how much are willing to pay what's the maximum value can we pay if we are to uh, obtain perfect um, information all right now how much that somebody will be willing to pay the maximum that somebody will be willing to pay is basically um, the 
value of perfect information, I should say. Value of perfect information. Okay, so value of perfect information, I will basically calculate by simply saying um, expected uh, value with perfect information minus best choice. Meaning the best choice I had when I was calculating um, the expected monetary value here at the first computation. So my best choice was a 34,000 small shop. And then I'm basically picking the expected value with perfect information, which is um, 60,000 minus $34,000. Okay, so I have uh, $26,000, so what, what does this uh, $26,000 imply? It simply implies that this is how much I'll be willing to pay for me to obtain perfect information. Anything beyond that, I'm not interested, because if I pay uh, $26,000, and then what I'm going to obtain, of course, is that value with perfect what? Information. So if I say 60,000 minus what I've paid, which is the 26,000, I'm arriving at 34,000. So this is the maximum that I'm prepared to pay or else I shouldn't pay anything beyond this because I would rather operate in a situation where I don't have perfect information. I just um, I check if I can go for large, small and do nothing. And as you can see, as I got the 60,000 minus 26,000, it gave me 34. Meaning it brings me to a, to a condition which I would have arrived at even if I didn't have perfect information. So most likely I might be more willing to pay something less than uh, 26,000. Um, okay? But the maximum that I can be willing to pay for me to obtain uh, the perfect information is basically 26,000. Uh, Thank you so very much for joining me in this tutorial.